I do agree we should be debating what's happening in the world and particularly the issue of ISIL, ISIS uh, and its impact not only on America, not only on Europe, but, but on the world, and that's what I intend uh, to do. We've all witnessed the horrific attacks uh, in Paris and this unprecedented form of eagle, evil that we have seen disrupt the lives of free people. And all Americans, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all Americans, stand in solidarity with Paris and the French people. This isn't just an attack on Paris. This is an attack on the free world, the civilized world. And don't just take my word for it, this conclusion, because ISIL has already made such a declaration. That is, we're coming after you. We're coming after all those who don't abide by our messianic message of our purpose in the world to destroy you because you don't agree with us. Sadly, the tragedy that we've seen in Paris reinforces that the battle against terrorism and extremism will not only be fought in the Middle East. The United States and Western nations are dealing with escalating security challenges that cannot be resolved through diplomacy and are not being resolved by the current strategy being used by this White House. The headline, a headline today in the Wall Street Journal, pressure grows for global response. We, the United States, need to show the world that threats to our principal freedoms are entirely unacceptable and will be resisted. And unfortunately, President Obama continues to fail to provide the American people with the leadership that we so desperately need. Just consider his response yesterday to the tragic events in Paris versus the response of the French president. French President Francis Hollande said, and I quote, France is at war. We are in a war against jihadist terrorism, which is threatening the ento entire world. I want to repeat that. France is at war. We are in a war against jihadist terrorism, which is threatening the whole world. At the same time, virtually at the same time, President Obama, in a shockingly dismissive tone, doubled down on his so-called strategy to deal with this global threat. And what has his strategy to date accomplished? Well, ISIS has expanded into more than half a dozen countries. They're not contained, as the president said. Ask the people in Paris if ISIS is contained. Ask the people who have been subject to attacks inspired by ISIL across the world. Is ISIS contained? I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I ask for <coughs> order here? The Senate will be in order. Time after time, our president has shown that he just simply doesn't get it. In 2012, he boasted Al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat. In 2014, he, he dismissed uh, the Islamic State as the JV team, saying that ISIS is, and I quote, an, a, not a direct threat to us or something that we have to wade into. Last Thursday, he said, I don't think the Islamic State is gaining strength. And again, saying, we've contained them. What will it take for this president to wake up and see what is happening around the world as a result of the ever-expanding threat of ISIS terrorism? Well, the president did say yesterday that if people have other ideas, bring them forward, he said. So what I'd like to do is offer a few suggestions for the president to consider. In fact, you know, I actually brought forward suggestions over a year ago, but of course, uh, none of them have been accepted or acted upon by the president that I'm aware of. When I first addressed this subject in the summer of 2014, I outlined several areas in which urgent action was required. First, and more importantly, I called for the administration immediately to articulate a comprehensive plan to defeat ISIS. You got a problem out there, you put a plan together to address the problem. And you do it in a comprehensive way, 
so you have a goal to achieve and a strategy to, to work out and achieve that goal. This comprehensive plan has been entirely absent from this Congress and from the American people. What we have seen instead are incremental responses, responses that contradict what the President had earlier said, basically responses to events that have taken place uh, behind the curve, not ahead of the curve, too little and too late. I called for efforts to reach out to nations across the globe to work together to defeat ISIS, including working with Islamic states and communities to oppose this outrageous ISIS perversion of the Islamic faith. I want to say that again. For those who simply say, this is a decision that affects America only, it's a our boots on the ground, that's all that we're calling for. That is entirely wrong. The president should know it, and I think he does know it. I, among many, have called for efforts to reach out to nations across the globe to work together to defeat ISIS, including working with Islamic states and communities to oppose the outrageous ISIS perversion of the Islamic faith. I called for a diplomatic effort to persuade Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Qatar, and other nations in the region to join with us to resist more forcefully ISIS aggression. I called last year for much greater security assistance for our potential partners in the fight against ISIS. The U.S. should have moved quickly to provide more arms, training, and other requested assistance to Iraqis, Kurdistan's Pismerga forces, proven fighters, proven fighters that are willing to stand up and confront ISIS. They needed our support. They needed weapons from us. They needed training and guidance from us, but they were ready to engage the fight. We also needed, I said, to find effective ways to support and directly arm the reliable vetted Sunni tribes and Sunni leaders in Iraq who are essential partners in combating ISIS extremists that ultimately are Sunni Islam's greatest threat. Now it's true. Uh, the question of where have they been? Where are they? We, we need more than them just sending a check to cover payment for somebody else to fight a proxy war. We need their engagement. They're in the crosshairs of ISIS. And why haven't they stepped up? Where is the flocking to the, the center square of town saying enough is enough? Where are the imams standing up saying this is a perversion of our religion? Where are the people simply saying those in the crosshairs of ISIS simply rising up together and saying, we need to address this. We also needed to find effective ways to support, as I said, those Sunni tribes and Sunni leaders, and those efforts have been slow, indirect, and insufficient. I called for us to provide lethal assistance to the Free Syrian Army. The administration's effort in this regard was an absurd 500 million multi-year effort to train and arm 40 fighters, most of whom were promptly killed or captured. And yes, I called for increased specialized military action by our own armed forces. I'm willing to stand here and say, among with many others, I have called for increased specialized military action by our own armed forces. Intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, special forces, not massive invasion, this has to be a global effort, as I have just talked about. It has to include Sunni nations. It has to include Islamists who believe that their faith and their culture is being perverted brutally by ISIS. Now, Mr. President, it's clear that ISIS cannot be defeated without U.S. participation. Nations of the world look to the United States to either have their back or to work with them and stand side by side. We have capabilities and capacity that other nations don't have. Coalitions cannot be formed without our engagement. Our bombing campaign, this strategy of bombing against ISIS targets has been far from adequate. There have been an average of just a handful a day, many of which have planes turning around with, and, and landing back at the airfield with bombs still attached to their wings because they simply haven't had the kind of targeting and directing to ensure that the rules of combat are, are uh, uh, 
confirmed with. Contrast this anemic bombing campaign with the bombing campaign before the first Gulf War with several thousand sorties a day. In Bosnia, it was several hundred a day. Clearly, our anemic air strategy is not defeating ISIS. And frankly, military history shows that air action only cannot achieve the goal of defeating an enemy. And lastly, I called on the Obama administration and Congress to reassess our border security and do whatever is necessary to make it stronger. One element of that effort is legislation that I introduced earlier this year, a bill that would enact changes to the visa waiver program and provide additional tools to enhance border security. Changes that, in my opinion, are absolutely necessary to address, uh, to fill and plug a gaping hole in our border security. And let me talk about that for a moment. The current visa waiver program allows citizens from several dozen nations to travel to the United States without a visa. They are citizens of these states. In order to expedite the travel process, we entered into a visa waiver program. That works fine if you don't have a situation like exists today with ISIS and other uh, forces, Al-Qaeda and others, trying to, to bring people into the United States to plant people here uh, to carry out uh, uh, evil acts against the American people. My bill then would amend the visa waiver program by tightening existing pre-travel clearance procedures and making them more focused on counterterrorism efforts. We have to now recognize the reality that exists here in terms of abuse of the visa, visa waiver program or the possibility of abuse and in inserting terrorists into the United States. The bill would ensure stricter compliance with information sharing agreements by those countries who participate in the visa waiver program and suspend their participation if they did not comply, come into compliance at 100% level. We can't afford any glitches. We can't go 99%. You got to go all the way. The bill would also, also, also authorize the Secretary of State to revoke any passport issued to a United States citizen who is suspected of engaging in terrorist activities and update the definition of treason to include support of terrorist organizations. Oh, I remember when introducing this, uh, the response, oh, that's too tough. Nothing is too tough these days to keep Americans safe. And we need to implement these provisions uh, that I introduced some time ago, many months ago because I believe it's a solution that addresses the real and growing threat of terrorist attacks carried out by individuals with Western passports. Unfortunately, these things that I have mentioned earlier and introduced earlier have not been adopted in any meaningful way. And now, a year and a half later, we're in a much more difficult position, with ISIS stronger and expanded to new areas and new countries. The threat to us all is comprehensive, multifaceted, and nearly global. It demands a global, comprehensive response. And so I would urge the President to seriously consider these and other proposals. And I would like to mention one other proposal this morning. In addition to what I've previously stated, I believe that it is now time to consider whether NATO should take on a vital new mission. NATO responded in Bosnia in 1994 and brought a peace. It can do so again. When I served as ambassador to Germany for four years, I had direct contact with NATO and NATO nations. And I know the accumulation of resources, of training, of capability is available through NATO. And it is a multi-nation, comprehensive coalition. Uh, it can play a vital role in dealing with this terrorist threat. We need a comprehensive, realistic, articulate plan if we're going to destroy ISIS. And NATO action should be part of that plan. Whether or not France invokes the Article 5 Collected Defense Provision of the NATO Treaty, which I think they should do, and perhaps that they will do, which requires all NATO nations to come to the support of and do what is necessary to address a threat to one of the nations. If one of the NATO nations is threatened, we all stand together to deal with it. Former NATO Commander Admiral James Starvidis had issued his own six-step plan for NATO engagement and leadership, 
to destroy ISIS, and we should look at that and take it seriously. He suggests that NATO should assign one of the major alliance commands to lead the operational planning for forceful military efforts against ISIS in both Syria and Iraq and bring all of the alliance resources to bear. In addition, he suggests our NATO allies should be joined in this effort by other non-member European states, such as Sweden and Finland, who were similarly threatened by ISIS terrorism. And most importantly, NATO, he said, NATO must work creatively to bring in the regional powers, such as the Kurdish Peshmerga, Saudi Arabia, and other Arab states in a broad, coordinated effort against ISIS under NATO leadership. This is a mechanism. This is an organization that is trained, that has the equipment, that has the capability, and this is the nation, this is the organization that can form the coalition necessary with our Arab friends and neighbors, uh, the Saudis, the Sunnis, others, that need to be a part of this if we're going to be successful. NATO's efforts against ISIS, he says, also should include assistance to Turkey. After all, Turkey is a NATO member to better secure their borders against the flow of jihadists in and out of Syria. This is uh, NATO uh, uh, at its best, and that is something that I think should be seriously considered by this White House as a way of moving forward to develop the coalition to address the great threat that we have. Well, let me now say one other thing, because Admiral Stravitis also suggests the possibility of forming some type of a coalition with Russia. We have seen a strong Russian response today, last evening, once it has been determined and proven that the Russian airliner was brought down by a bomb and by ISIS. ISIS has taken credit for it. ISIS receives the wrath of the Russian military as a result, in direct contest, contrast to what we have done for attempts at our own people. Um, I'm not a big fan of Putin. I'm not a big fan of Russia. I spoke out strongly about Russia's invasion to Ukraine and an annexation of Crimea. I strongly advocated for Russia's diplomatic isolation. In fact, I so strongly advocated for it, they put me on a list of seven people who are banned from entering Russia for life. Well, I've been to Russia and I don't need to go back, so it was no big deal, but apparently it was a big deal to them. But now we are facing an emergency situation. Russia forces are deployed in Syria. Russian efforts need to be coordinated with NATO efforts if we go the NATO route, we're already coordinating in terms of some of our flights. And as we've learned in 1941, national emergencies can create strange bedfellows. But whatever option is considered, the irreducible minimum is real, determined U.S. leadership. This tragic war and escalating terrorist threat have continued and grown much too long without an effective American response. Oh yes, we've had a response, mostly rhetorical, but clearly a strategy that has not succeeded, clearly something that is not deterring ISIS from growing stronger and spreading further. It simply has not been effective. So whether it's through NATO, whether it's through a coalition of the willing, vigorous American leadership is absolutely essential for the future of all of us. In conclusion, let me say this. In 2014, the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, said, and I quote, our last message is to the Americans. Soon we will be in direct confrontation, and the sons of Islam have prepared for such a day. So watch, for we are with you watching. This is the enemy that we're dealing with. This is not some vague threat. This is a direct threat. We've seen how they carry out their direct threats. And we stand in the crosshairs. And yes, it is very possible and probably very true that they are with us here, now, 
watching, waiting, planning, contriving for another Paris, for another Baghdad, for another attack. Hopefully none, but something that could be possibly much greater than what we even saw in Paris. They have created their homeland in Syria, but they've told us what we don't want to hear, but which is probably true, and that is they are here, and they're watching, and they're waiting. So the question is, does President Obama grasp what we are up against? Last year, he laid out the goal of defeating ISIS, but President Obama still has not put forward a comprehensive strategy to accomplish that goal. That's obvious. And yesterday, he doubled down on the same policies that have led to our current foreign policy failures. The effort to defeat ISIS will only be successful with leadership from the President of the United States. Let me say that again. The effort to defeat ISIS will only be successful with the leadership from the President of the United States. So, Mr. President, we as Republicans, we as Democrats, independents, Americans, we as Americans desperately need for you to provide that leadership at this critical time. 